Uh, it's, it's been super cool coming out here, uh, you know, coming out with these guys. Uh, you know, all the seasons I played in football, I've, I've actually never been selected for like a media day or anything. So, you know, for my last season, I, uh, it's it's definitely a good feeling. Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm more excited for this season coming up, uh, and, and fall camp, camp is right around the corner. So, man, I'm I'm in that mode. I'm I'm really excited. Uh, I mean, I don't honestly. I didn't know what to expect going into the uh, my first season here at OU. I mean, it was a uh, big thing that was crazy to me was you know having uh, opponent fans being that like crazy towards us. I've never been. I've never really experienced playing in Hawaii. Uh, we didn't really have rivalries like that. I mean, you know, we had like little uh, games where we played for trophies here and there, but it was nothing compared to the uh, how it is, you know, playing in Texas and uh, playing in the uh, Bedlam game. And I mean, shoot, having people storm the field after games. I mean, I've never experienced that, so it was it was very uh, crazy for sure. And I mean, my season last year, I, uh, definitely a lot of misproduction out there. Uh, I think my first season. Uh, I needed to be a little bit more, uh, I'd say, aggressive in how I approach things. And so, you know, this off season, I mean, I've been working out with Schmitty since January. And so, you know, that, that guy is the definition of, you know, uh, intense and uh, aggressive. So, I mean, shout out to Coach Schmitty. Uh, he's definitely getting me right mentally and physically for sure for, uh, for this upcoming season. Uh, okay, so when I first got here last year in January, I probably was like 260. I mean, I was fresh off of like quarantine from COVID because we were in Hawaii, we were supposed to play in a bowl game against Memphis, which got canceled because of uh, we had like 25 guys test positive for COVID. Because, you know, like the rest of the world, you guys, everybody else had COVID, you know, really quick. It kind of went through it. Everybody had got it and got it out of their systems. But, you know, the islands, we – we kind of, you know, they closed off the island. You couldn't come. So we didn't really experience COVID until 2021. And so, uh, yeah, so we had quarantine and everything. And then so I came here uh, to OU. I was about like 260 because I, I couldn't do anything. I came straight out of quarantine. Um, and so you know, I was 260 and now, now I weigh uh, 293. So in January of this year, we came back from uh, Christmas break after the season. Uh, and, you know, I was working out with Schmitty since January. And I met with my nutritionist, uh, got a meal plan going. And, I mean, I gained 30 pounds basically since January uh, until now. And, I mean, that transition into the interior, you know, I needed to gain that weight because, you know, you can't be playing, uh, you know, two eye, you know, nose uh, weighing 260 because you're going to right, get thrown around, get thrown out the club. So uh, I had to put on that weight. And, I mean, I feel uh, great. I, I feel more f explosive and sh the strongest I've been. I, I feel even faster than I was when I was uh, lighter. And, and it's pretty funny. I was talking to Coach Bates uh, literally yesterday. We were joking around. He was, like, saying how I look even better at 293 than I did at 260. So uh, I think I was supposed to be this big this whole time. Uh, I had to let go of that dream of, you know, dropping back, getting a pick, which I did. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, yeah, it, it's been a great transition for sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, I think it's because of how well I took on, uh, you know, the position change. Because some people would, uh, you know, kind of refuse it at first, and they wouldn't want to change that position because they want to let go of that, you know, being on the edge and you know being a, a, a linebacker. And but I mean, I, I just wanted to do what I uh, needed to do to you know help this team be the best that they can be. And so whatever, whatever I have to do, I'll do it. Uh, hmm, at this position I'm playing now, I mean, some some people that are crazy at, uh, in DT uh, NFL, I'd say is Grady Jarrett, uh, he, who also played in this uh, this defense that we play in, this defensive scheme. Uh, another person I, I just love to watch, I mean, Aaron Donald, of course, he's a, an unstoppable force for sure. Uh, and I, I actually met him too in, in Hawaii, which was a crazy experience. I, I watched him work out. Uh, when the Rams went out there for the preseason game, they played in the Cowboys back in like 2019. 
Um, and I mean, just watching him work out was just crazy. And uh, just watching how he plays the game and his motor, his high motor that he has, and, the, and you know how he'll take on double teams the whole game and allow his guys to uh, rush uh, on the other side. I mean, you know, I, I, those are people I, I'd say I model my game after for sure. I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, people always hate on OU because of what they've done, you know, all the conference championships they've won and, you know, the the history that this program has. I mean, obviously, everybody's going to, you know, throw try to throw dirt on our names. And, I mean, every time we play somebody and play an opponent there, we're going to get their best, uh, the best of the best. You know, we're going to get their game seven mentality. Like in the NBA, you know, game seven, you know, they're putting all all out on the line. And, I mean, every opponent we play, I mean, they they're, that's what they're giving us. And, I mean, I think it's a great feeling that, you know, you beat someone knowing that they gave you their best. So, I mean, I, that's what I'm looking forward to. And, I mean, I'm excited for the season for sure. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, if you look in the football world and you see someone with a, a, a lot of vowels and a long last name, you probably, <laughs> probably gonna assume that they're, you know, Polynesian, some type of, you know, Samoan, Hawaiian, or or Tongan. And I mean, you know, growing up, uh, I was raised by my mom, who she was from. She was born and raised in New Zealand, and uh, her her parents were from uh, Western Samoa. And I mean, growing up watching, you know, Troy Polamalu. I mean, and looking up to guys like that, I mean, Marcus Mariota and, uh, you know, players like that in the NFL and in college, uh, it, it was really crazy to watch and uh, knowing that they have the same background as me, you know, coming from a very small island where they don't really have a lot. And, I mean, football has been such a, a great opportunity for them to, you know, better their lives. And, I mean, it, it was almost like I was made for football in, in a way, just how I was born, you know, half black and half Samoan. Uh, and so... I mean, I, I love this sport. I've been playing this sport for since I, I can't even remember because I've just been always bigger than kids that were my age. I mean, everybody that I used to hang out with was always older than me. And so, you know, I, I'm thinking I'm regular size because I'm hanging out with guys that are like three years older than me. And so when I started playing football, and everybody was so much smaller. It was so weird because I was playing against people that were my age. You, you said what? For sure. Uh, the Polynesian culture is uh, big on family because, you know, they usually have really big families. And, I mean, you know, you grow up hanging out with your cousins and your uh, your siblings. And, you know, I have so many cousins. And it's 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 sad that I don't get to see them as much because, you know, they all live uh, in Australia and New Zealand. And so, I, uh, but, you know, a big emphasis in the Polynesian cultures is, is family for sure. Oh, thank you. Um, so when I put this weight on, uh, I've noticed, you know, I'm, I'm much more stronger when it comes to getting off blocks, which is a, a big thing I think I struggled with last season, uh, getting off blocks and, you know, accelerating through the finish to make a play. Uh, I think there's a lot of plays where I was, I could have made a, a sack or I got a TFL, but I was, you know, I was still stuck on blocks. And so, you know, gaining this weight and uh, getting stronger, uh, I think it definitely helped me. Um, be able to finish these plays and finish, um, you know, accelerate through blocks and finish uh, on plays. Uh, honestly, I, it it didn't really, I didn't really feel like I gained weight at all. I mean, uh, the way I did it, I just tried to make sure it was smooth and I didn't want to rush it because you know some people they try to rush gaining weight so then they just start eating, 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 eating. But you know, I I made sure to be careful of what I ate and I was making sure I ate the right things because. Uh, you know, especially it's my last season. I can't just be throwing random stuff in my body, eating bags of chips every night, even though I want to. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just made sure I got with my nutritionist and I, you know, came up with a meal plan. You know, 50% uh, of my plate was going to be carbs, 25 fruits and vegetables, and, like, 25% protein. And, I mean, I stayed with that this whole off season, And, I mean, a lot of protein shakes. And I mean, you know, a lot of the times I'm sitting there eating at, you know, breakfast or dinner or lunch, sitting there for 45 minutes trying to finish my plate because, you know, I, I, I'm trying to put that weight on and I, I can't, you know, not eat the food. And I, 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 if I put it on my plate, I have to eat it. That was my rule.
So it's actually funny. I, we knew I was going to play DT uh, before the season started last year. So in fall camp, uh, when we were maybe like a little bit halfway through camp or, yeah, I'd say like halfway through camp, they my coach, Coach Shave came up and talked to me. He's like, you know, we noticed that you your movements on the inside are you look so natural and, you know, you're way more comfortable on the interior than you're on the edge. They're you know, like, you know, we probably like, think about putting you on the uh, interior next season, uh, putting me in with Coach Bates. And I was like, I mean, I'll do whatever it takes, Coach. Like, uh, to, for this team to win, I'll do whatever it takes. And if they needed me to play long snapper, i will do it. Whatever it takes for this team to win. Because, you know, I love these guys and I, I just want to win. Um, I'd say R. Mason Thomas. Uh, he actually, he's actually living with me right now. I mean, I, I'd say if you watching this defense, look out for three two uh, Mason. He's a great player. It's just his ability to like his quickness and and his quick twitch and his high motor. He's such a great player to watch. I mean, last year in fall camp, I remember literally um, this play we we're doing like a goal line situation at practice, and Mason. Uh, he's a true freshman, like literally 17 years old at that time. And I mean, he it was a goal line stop that he did against the, our, our, our one offense. And I mean, he like, he was like, uh, I think it was like in a two point stance on the edge. And he like, he like bent, man, that, he's just crazy athlete. And he just, he got under a block and then made the TFL and uh, stopped the offense from scoring. And I mean, since then I just knew, you know, there's something special about him for sure. And uh, you know, another young guy I'd say to look out for in the future is definitely uh, Ashton Sanders. I mean, Peyton Bowen. Uh, shoot, who else? Grayson Halton. You know, those guys are some you know freak athletes uh, at their age. And I mean, you know, once they get everything right, you know, mentally and experiencing things, because that's the thing about football. You can you know you can know things, but you you have to experience it, uh, and that just comes with you know playing in games and experiencing things, different looks. And I mean, those guys, I'd say look out for them for sure. You mentioned Ashton. What role was Ashton, Marcus Strong, trying to bring them along? What for sure I think from Rondell and I'm off to use Chris. I mean, Ashton Sanders, he's a strong uh, defensive lineman. He's strong uh, upper body and lower body for sure. I mean, once he, you know, works out with Schmitty some more, and you know he uh, burned some of that little baby fat from being young. I mean he's going to be a monster for sure. I mean he's smart uh, with the playbook. He he's picking things up very uh, very well and very quickly. And I mean I got uh, a lot of respect for him. And you know I we hold, I hold him to a higher standard for sure. Uh, and I mean even when he first came in in the, in, in the spring, I mean we when we were working out he was he was very vocal, uh, trying to get guys together. You know during mat drills. Cause you know, Matt Drills is a different type of monster for sure. Uh, and so, I mean, you know, when, when I heard him being vocal, you know, I, it made me uh, uh, learn a lot of respect, earn a lot of respect from him. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I, I say I expect a lot of great things from him for sure. Uh, Dijon, that's my guy. And, and Phil, for sure, that's my guy. I love Phil, for sure. I mean, uh, he's we're always texting and uh, FaceTiming. I mean, we literally went to the movies the other day, like almost all of the D-line. Uh, we went and watched a scary movie. We watched like Insidious or something. De Dejon didn't want to come because he said he, uh, he said that stuff is real, so he didn't want to <laughs> he didn't want to bring it home with him. But I mean, uh, you know, we all went to the movies. It was super fun. You know, guys were scared. I mean, I mean we were loud in the movie theater. I felt bad for the people in there because you know they had guys screaming and stuff. Because I mean, at first we came in late. And so, you know, we came in late to the movie theater, and I mean, we came in like at a scary part, and I mean, but uh, I love these new guys, and I think they're adapting very well. Uh, Dejon Terry, he's, he's adapting very well. He's picking up the playbook uh, very well, and I mean, Phil, he is also, uh, you know, the older, experienced guys, you know, they can uh, pick up the defensive scheme faster. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm excited to watch those guys play for sure. I mean, and Dejon is a huge, huge boy, a big boy for sure. I mean, I, I, it's funny, when he came in, I shook his hand, and I was like, dang. <laughs> uh, because it's because they actually came and uh, came to my house because they were waiting for their place to get done, and so they they came over and slept over, and I mean just talking to them and chopping it up with them, and uh, you know 
When we're doing little uh, individual drills, I, I already made it a, a statement that I'm not going against uh, Dijon for sure. I'm not doing no drills with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have a lot of we definitely brought the right guys in uh, this off season. So shout out to our our coaches for that. You know, hats off to them for recruiting these guys because you know they these are guys that have great character and you know they have a, a great willingness to work and their coachability. Man, I feel like I, I sound like Coach V, man. <laughs> but but uh, now nah, these we got we brought some great guys in and I, I'm really excited to watch them play. Uh, especially even on the offense, you know we have some great guys we brought in on the offense. I'm, I'm excited to watch. Uh, so, you know, look out for that for sure. Uh, so the guys that miss spring ball, you know, you got to put in a little bit more time with them on our own uh, meeting and watching film to catch them up because you're only as strong as your weakest link. So if you got guys, you know, behind the starters and whatnot that uh, don't really know what they're doing, it kind of puts the coaches in a, a difficult position because they, you, if they don't, the coaches know that they don't know the playbook, then it's kind of hard. You can't really put, you can't play those players that don't know the playbook, uh, because you know if if 10, 10 out of eleven people execute the play, it, it can still uh, end up in a touchdown or uh, you know negative yardage. And so um, we've had to you know spend the extra time in the after lifting in the weight room uh, or you know player practices and uh, film rooms or coming in on Saturdays. Uh, you know, just doing little things like that and then, you know, going out to eat afterwards because, you know, you got guys coming in that are new and you want to get them more comfortable, uh, you know, out here in Oklahoma and, uh, you know, show them uh, show them how we get down over here in Oklahoma. So uh, I think we I think we're getting along very well uh, in this defense line and all these new guys coming in. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys.